set our card. Five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. I'm Apostle Alberry. This is Trinity. Trinity. Um, we thank you all for joining us today. We're going to ask you to share, right? We want to share, 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 share as we get ready to um, go to the Word of God, as we get ready to um, partake uh, and become. You know, we're going to study to become, amen? Mm -hmm. Study to become the Word of God so we can walk in the freedom of which that Word brings, amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, I thank God for having my daughter with me today. Uh, um, this Sunday day, we going to, um, like I said again, we want to ask, ask people to share, let everybody know that, um, you know, to tune in to chime in on the word today. Uh, we're going to open us up in prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for a brand new day, Lord God. We just want to say, Heavenly Father, have your way, Lord God. Let your words come okay. down through us, Lord God, and that we receive what you're saying. Let it penetrate our hearts, Lord God. Let it plant um on good ground, let it grow a beautiful harvest, so Heavenly Father, that we are going to not just study to just receive, but to study and become. And Lord God, I just pray for every um, ears, eyes, heart that's out there, Lord God, let it plant on good ground. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 We pray that everybody's having a blessed Sunday. Amen. A blessed Sunday. Um, and we want, what we're going to talk a little bit about today, and you know, me and Trey going to uh, uh, as the Lord leads us to just talk, talk on this topic. It was a topic we were talking about during the week, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, and it, it, I don't know, it just stayed in my spirit. That's what God wants us to communicate about uh, to his people, to his sons and daughters, and to all who are listening, uh, who have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say today. Uh, and we're going to come out of the book of Corinthians. I want you to turn to your Bibles to those. Go get your Bible. Please go get your Bible. Amen. That's all about Please go get your Bible, amen. amen. Get your Word of God if you got it on the phone, whatever. And turn to First Corinthians. But before we go into it, I just want to say that um, one there was something when we talk about uh, transitioning from twenty twenty to twenty twenty one. There was one major thing, and God brought it back to my mind again. And it's not that we haven't spoke on it; God has not spoken on it. And, uh, but it's like God wanted to revisit it today. That was going on. It was huge. Um, and um, there was something huge going on in 2020 as we entered into 2021. And we talked about it. What we say was? Um, the the, what was going on in 2020 was there was a lot of division. Yeah. Great division. And I, and I wrote it down. Yeah. It was a time of great division. 2020, um, in the nation, there was great division. There was great division between Republicans and Democrats. There was great division between blacks and whites and black, black Lives Matters. And there was great division between police officers and civilians. There was great, great division. And what, when something stands out like that, um, God is speaking. If we look through the times in the scriptures, you will see that God has always inserted himself in time. We were talking, talking to some of the sons and daughters, got some sons, to some of God's sons and daughters about this today. In the times of Egypt, you know, there was God inserted Moses to deliver his people from Egypt. We see when it, uh, in the time of Babylon, we see Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. We, in the time of Persia, we see Daniel in Rome. We see Christ come. We always see God inserting himself Um through the different nations, no matter what nation was moving at time. But when things would um, become um, large, and when they would catch your attention, it would be those things that God would be talking to his people about. Amen? He would be giving his people attention. So what is God saying to his church that we need to pay attention to that was exposed through the nation? What is God saying to his people that was exposed? Because when you think about when we're talking about a, uh, there was great division in this nation, it's kind of interesting because when you look at the place, at least one nation under God, indivisible, right? So it says it's one nation under God, indivisible, meaning not divided. But yet, 2020, the year of vision, what we our eyes were open to was it was great division. 
there was so much division coming from so many directions. So when it, when it comes to this, what was my question is what is what was God exposing about His people? What was God saying to His church in a time where there was such great division? Was God getting our attention? Was God allowing us to say, you know what? You uh, the reason why we're not moving with power, the church is not moving with power, the church is not uh, transforming as in, in the manner in which God desired. Could it be because we are so divided? You know what I'm saying? That we're so divided. And was God exposing this division? Uh, uh, even with, even when you look at COVID nineteen, what did COVID nineteen? It divided people. COVID nineteen separated people. It you had you couldn't go longer. You no longer go to family reunions. You could no longer go. Christmas looked different. It was a virus that brought great separation. You couldn't hug no more. You couldn't kiss no more. You had, I remember at my job. You know we were, at my job at Be Strong. Everybody hugged. It was it, it it was ironic to go to my job and see people no longer hugging anymore. So the very virus um, exposed um, division, separation. Um, well, we know it, it's like you six inches apart. You know what I'm saying? So what is God saying to us? And I will, and I happen to believe that God, when He's talking to a nation that large, He's actually started because the Bible said judgment started the house of the Lord. I believe that He's actually talking to the church. You know what I'm saying? I believe God is actually talking to His people because, and it's interesting, just like just like for instance, the nation would say. Like the United States, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, not divided. Well, we know that the body should be one. There's one body, though there are many members. There is just one body. You know what I'm saying? Well, Christ is the head, and there is one body. So, is there a problem? Could there be a problem of God exposing that the church is divided, and that's why God is said in 2021. I need my people to turn their eyes back to the one, which is the head of the body, who will bring us all back together instead of every man being tossed to and from and carried about, carried about by his own, by his own doctrine, his own teaching. So we kind of want to explore that today, right? We want to talk about it. Um, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I wrote it down, man, it, 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 I believe God exposed it. And one area we're going to talk about that is with this is not this is not anything new. We see that it was an issue um, that we see a, it was a reoccurring issue in the body while Christ was building the body. Satan was coming to divide the body. You know, he, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I believe the greatest way to destroy something is to divide it from the inside out. You know, what I'm saying the cause of you want to destroy a family, begin to divide it from the inside out. Begin to insert. Anger and bitterness, suspicion, begin to insert envy and strife, and you will destroy it from the inside out. What is the inside out? When you begin to deal with the heart, when the heart begins to be things inserted in it that cause you to have um, strife against your brothers and sisters. And I would have you to believe that is going on even to, it's going on today, not in a small, and I want y'all to hear this. This is not a small thing, and that's why I believe that God used a huge thing to expose it. He used the whole world initially to expose this division that's going on in, in the body. Because Satan knows if he can divide, he, Satan knows scripture. Or he knows scripture. He just he cannot obey scripture, he cannot comply with the word, or he would be divided. But he knows scripture. And it is written in the word of God, a house divided cannot stand. Amen. So when something has not the ability to stand, how can it be a covering for somebody? How can it be protection for someone? How can the church be a covering and protection from someone when it has no ability to stand? So we want to, so we're going to start it. Um, you want to, you want to say on that? No, that was good. Yeah. That was good. So let's look at Paul, who had to deal with this, this issue, dealing with um, the church of Corinthians. Amen. I'm going, we're going to have, we're going to slow, we're going to have Miss um, 
Jasmine. No, no. What's her name again? Jasmine. Jasmine. That's her name, Jasmine. Hello. We gonna have Miss Jazzy J. Say hello, Jazzy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> she gonna read for us today. Uh, Jazz, start at verse ten. What chapter? We're gonna start at the first chapter. Chapter. Cause while Jazzy, while she's getting there, one thing I noticed that uh through COVID nineteen, uh families were divided. Yeah. You know, friendships were divided. Uh, churches were divided. There was a lot of things that just blew up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the whole thing about like when you said um recently about how you know God was sure like the heart of what's going on. And maybe starts at the church. Mm -hmm. We are divided. Like for some reason, you will see like the Jews, like different religions, they all are really like, I don't know, they're kind of mostly all one accord, but for for some reason with Christians, it's always like, okay, I'm Baptist, I'm seven day, I'm like we are like divided. Oh, I'm like it's the whole thing called passive Christian or oh, I'm Christian. Like it it's just like, but when we're, we're supposed to be under oh Jesus, who is the head, you know, it's supposed to be it's one body. We are different members, but it's supposed it's one spirit. It's not different spirits. We should be all on one accord mm -hmm. on something, on um, everything, literally, about you know what we who we serve, and it's just kind of sad to see see that you know that even your fellow fellow brother or sister. Who is who is in Christ and stuff, but you see things differently. Everything's like it's like I see this differently. Um, some people are more I don't know. It's just like it's just like where it's like it's not really like a body, like like not like family. It's just like okay, you're left wing or right wing, and that's just you're like that. Left, huh? Yeah, you're on the like, right, you're left liberal, you're the uh, right wing. You're conservative. You're conservative. All these yeah. different. And that's why the, the, the United States looks so divided. Every time you'll notice that every time division start, the division increases. You know, it becomes a new name for people. You, you know, you have the uh, first you the Republicans, and you have the um, Democrats. Then you have the liberals. Then you Democrat liberal, or you uh, conservatives. You got all these different names that what that conform not to the government but conform to people's ideas and ideology. You know what I'm saying? In other words, when a person has an idea and ideology, they begin to insert and then they get another group. people everybody agree with their idea and ideology. And these different groups and sects, everybody looking for their everybody's looking to um to push their ideal or their ideology as the number one. That's the right way. We we have it the right way. We was talking today, we, I remember talking, I said this today, that um that it's interesting when one president come in, we are, we, we are nothing, we're simply on a roller coaster ride, people. We are on a roller coaster ride. Let me tell you what I mean by that. One president come in, he implement all his executive orders and began to import everything that he perceived as being right. As soon as another president come in, you know what the first thing he do? He begins to undo everything there. How can a nation really grow as a people unified when we keep undoing and doing, undoing and undoing things? That, and it's the same thing. And I found out that that mentality goes on in the church too. Uh, one pastor begins to water one way, and as he begins to water the word one day, way, then something that they go to another church, and this church wants to undo what this pastor said and began to say what well, his way is better than doing it doing it this way and then they learn that way then they leave that church and go to another church and they say well you know what no let's undo what you've been taught here instead of saying you know what i love what you were taught here let's extend and continue to grow we like to undo and begin to establish that our way is the best way. Well, we're going to say it's the best way. It's the, the Pentecostal way. We're going to say the best way is the Baptist way. We're going to say the best way is, you know, and, and, and um, this undoing and doing does not establish. When you, when, you, when you do and you undo, you don't establish. And it does not look like there's unification. And one thing it definitely don't look like, it doesn't look like stability. And if you look at the United States for years, the stability is not, don't get it twisted. United States is a, um, 
billions of dollars in debt to other nations. Stability is not, just because they look all beautiful, stability is not one of the things that the United States is grasping hold of real great. And the church, is there stability in the church? And, 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 and this is something that God, I'm just, we are addressing what God wants to address today. We want to address what God wants to. There's a lot of, okay, this person went, that person went, this person went, that person went. Mm -hmm. But it should be only one, one way. way. The way, as Jesus' way. So it's like, what does the word says? And then, you know, it's good that for, it says, you know, sit down and elaborate and mm -hmm. talk of this out. But you're doing it on what base? The foundation, which is the word, that's what the foundation is. That's how you come and communicate. Okay, some people talk about dating or or not dating and stuff like that. Okay, then sit down, we can talk this out. Like, you can talk it out. It's nothing like, you know, major, but like one pastor says, oh, it's okay today. Another pastor says, it's not okay today or whatever. But that's okay. They have two different views. Okay, so what is the worst? What does Jesus say? Because my God, Jesus. It's like, it's like, what did God say? Who? Who we are following. It says follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. So all of us we could come to like literally we can just come together. Literally, you could talk about different topics. And literally the word has something for every topic. And plus he hit he has no nothing from you. You could ask, he will answer you. It's just that you would like to hear the answer. And, um, and, and, and to to know that we should be on one accord. He said, How will the world know that you are my disciple? The way you love one another. No. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. commandments. So the word is connected to the oneness. He, th he said the, the world going to know that uh, we are his disciples in the way we love one another. So evidently, a disciple who is one who is disciplined in the word, that word manifested, should reveal a love of unity for one another, not a division, a word of unity for one another. Even if a brother fall away in the word, there's a, a way of loving that brother and bringing that sister back into the fold. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes that may look different, it, it, but it's in the word, but it's still love. Let me let me show you what it looks look different for me. Uh, for one, you could have a situation where the Bible says, he who is spiritual, go to your brother and restore him with the spirit of meekness. Amen. Bringing him back into the fold. And then we look in the book of Acts where it's still love, where he says, put him out the church, turn him over to Satan that he might, that his soul might be saved. Guess what? That might be an act of love too. That's an act of love that's in the scripture that is shown by God. He says, turn him over to Satan that, uh, that his soul might be saved. In other words, turn him over to his sin. Let his sin bring him to the end of himself that his soul might be saved. In other words, the soul of scripture talks that both of those situations can occur in both situations or an act of love. But what we'll say is we'll grab one and say, you'll go to one pastor, he'll grab one and say, no, you got to no, go with the spirit of meekness. And then and, and then then you go to that pastor and say, well, my pastor, this man of God put me out of the church and I left the church because I don't like what he was saying. And then the other pastor is going to embrace what you're saying as if it's not in the scripture that the Bible says, turn that person over to Satan that their soul may be saved. See, what you know is, what that man of God may not know is what how that person was behaving in that other church was so reckless, was so uh, wicked and so evil that, the, that God, God said, no, turn him over. And yet now you embrace the child that was turned over and now he can't be transformed. Why? Wow. Because he done found a place that embraces his sin. And you're telling him no, that and this will be say, no, no, that man of God should never put you out on church. God don't put you out on church. That's not true. It's in the scripture. If it's in the scripture, that means God can move that way. Can I get an amen? amen. And even when you put someone out, that means that doesn't mean that man of God is putting you out that your soul may be lost. But you know what? Sometimes, Sometimes it will take that so you can bump your head. Mm -hmm. Like, go ahead, do, do what you want, do because this is what you want, and realize that like, hey, but it's all for it says at the end, like, so he can be saved. Yes. Because the plan of God is salvation. How some may get there. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you have kids, some kids you might have to spank their butt. <laughs> See, Trina, I ought to just look at her and she start crying. Because your, your stairs are so. <laughs> you know, um, some kids you have to punish. Yeah. 
you know, you take away little, 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 her shoe game and all of a sudden it's different. What I'm saying is that there may be different ways to get people to their place where God wants their heart to be open to grow. But if many women of God can't discern and, and, and they only perceive the way they are doing it is the right way, then what you keep finding out is you have the, 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 what? the children are not really growing, just like the United States. The United States is not really growing. Though it, 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 it looks like it's growing because technology is growing. But what's it? Technology is growing. Buildings are growing. Guess what? New cars are coming out. But guess what? We, have, we When it comes to murder, we're the capital. When it comes to lying, when it comes to cheating, when it comes, look at our TV shows, cheaters and divorce court. We are not growing as a people, uh, as a nation, growing in morality. We are not growing in, in a godly nature. We are declining into filth. But because we are looking at the fact is, oh man, look at these new buildings and look at the fact is, look at uh, science and look at, we're looking at the external things and things seem to be as progressing, but divorce is at the highest rate. We uh, we are, we kill more babies in abortion clinics than ever before. So we have declined greatly. So what am I saying? In the church, it's the same thing. It looked like the church is going, you got, oh my God, 10,000 people going to this church over here. You got 15,000 people going to this church over here. It seemed like every time a new, um, um, a new charismatic movement come, uh, people just running. But yet, divorce in the church is at its highest rate. Deception, people people don't keep their word in the church. People lie in the church. People uh, hate each other in the church. Has the God, has godliness declined in the church, but entertainment increased? Have we become more um, moved by entertainment? We don't, we don't, we run to receive a word instead of running to become a word. I don't know. Just some, I want us to talk about that. God wants us to talk about it because so God is waking us up. Amen. He says, I want you to turn your eyes back to the one. I want to wake you up. People, man, we in a move now that people be like, you ain't got to submit to nobody. You, you ain't got to, you ain't got to humble yourself with nobody. You know, people, I, I said, you know, people trying to, it's so much stuff that's being said that it's like, it's ridiculous. And it don't even line it with the word of God. That's just a fit there. Like, my what you opinion. want. What so I, I, I don't feel bad about what I'm doing, you know, kind of. Like if I can make it work for me, mm -hmm. as in like right now, there's a whole Bible out, you guys, called Queen James Version. Okay, a whole Bible, Queen James Version, straight out crazy, and they took out all the parts of God we're saying about um sexual immorality or and stuff like that, so it could suit their lifestyle. But then since we since when God has to suit our lifestyle. And, he, like he's the creator. Like it's not like okay, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, God, I'm gonna take out sexual morality. I'm gonna take out lying, submitting, all this good stuff. And I just want the part where you give me my money, <laughs> and I can just do whatever I want because if it's me, and I don't have to change. You have to change. God has to change for us. But that's not how it works. Like God is the creator. He says he's. This is his foundation. He set the rules. He sets his words. And everything, and it's us that's transformed. He transformed our lives so we can um, obey Him, so we can comply to Him. It's not the op it's not the other way around. Since when we are the CEO and God is just like a little do boy? No, like it doesn't work like that. Like it's like reverence Him. He is Lord. You can't even control the day. like when you breathe. Not right now it could be your last day. God forbid. But I'm just saying it could be your last day. You talking about? Oh, God, I want this, I want that, do this, do that. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. You don't have to correct me and stuff like that. Like, it's just, if he can't correct you, you know, it is. Like, you're not his child. And it's just like, since when God is like a puppet and we're the puppet master, it does not work he, that way. God is not the, he, he is not the, um, he is the pot. He is the, we're the clay. Yeah. He's the pot. You know, I was, I was looking and listening to, I'm, I'm telling you, this, this, this deception is huge. Exactly. That's why it is. I was watching a, a well-known pastor, um, 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 and he had invited, um, and I'm not gonna mention names. He invited this uh, movie producer on the show, and they in the church, 
And the theme of it was to talk on success. And I thought it was so interesting that when they were asking the one who was producing the movies to tell his story, and his story really wasn't about the transformational power of God's to a heart. It was about how to become successful in using God to accomplish it. And people were sucking that up that he said, the man sitting up there talking about, and they're using God, and this, they're using the platform of God, and this, it's, 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 it's happening in the church. And the man of God, he's talking to the, of the producer, and the producer is talking about how he saved his money, and he's using God to say that it was God that elevated what he's doing and what he's, which let me tell you what's interesting, but he said something I thought was profound. He said, you know, that he would go and he, he, he gave his life story. He would talk about his imagination. And it's interesting when he talked about his imagination because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. What am I saying? Whatever you write, whatever you produce, whatever you put out there is coming from the condition of your heart. Would you agree? According to scripture. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. So whatever song, whatever movie, whatever you write. Now, this person that's that this, this this only took place a month ago. This is not a long time ago. This is during the time. And this is how this church got 10,000 people in there. And they are listening. And the man, the preacher, is sitting there interviewing this, this man who's speaking as from a godly perspective about how God made about success and how to persevere and how to keep going to become successful. But what I found ironic is the Bible said you would know them by their fruit. So fruit, I watch this. Fruit means one's nature, character. But how do you know someone about their fruit? Watch what they see and produce what they put out there. And what's interesting, when you look at his move, this person movies and TV shows, they're the most blind, they're the most grimy, filthy, profanity, violence, sexual immorality. It is so clear of filth. And yet God promoted. So God wanted to give you a stage to use his name to say it was okay to produce filth, uncleanness, unholiness, unrighteousness. How does that bring glory to God? And see, this is the deception and this is the division. How tell me how does that bring glory to God? Let my, please be not deceived. Uh, God is not mocked. Whatever man sow it, he reap. So let me tell you something. If you say that you have the seed, if we say we have the seed of Jesus Christ, is not that seed holy? And does not the scripture say, be holy for I am holy? So don't tell me because I say, because you became successful, because evidently you have not, some people, you have not studied your word. Because the Bible says in Genesis, in the 11th chapter, I believe the 11th chapter, correct me if I'm wrong, when they built the Tower of Babel, was that the 11th chapter, Greg? No, 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 was it, it um, I, I want to make sure. It was in the 11th chapter when they, uh, It was the eleventh chapter. Uh, yeah, it's the eleventh chapter when when they when they built a tower of Babel. These men were building something great, but you know what these men said? Let's build this and put our name on it. So they were not building it for the glory of God. But God said something at that time. He said, "Let's go down and confound their language because there would be nothing impossible for man if he put his mind to it. If they you know so." That means success is just because you get. You got some tough talk to me. Oh no! It 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 was um what you said because it says their heart posture was lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. But it, it goes back to the whole to, thing about the division. Division. Yeah. division. There's a division because but they but God brought the division based upon their language because their heart posture was not right. So when our heart posture, as you said it, when our heart is not right, we're not unified. And since we ought to be unified because Christ singular, if we turn our eyes to Christ, all of us should be operating under the same heart. But why? Because all of us should be having the same thing in our heart. I'm going to read it. All of us should be having the same thing in our heart. And if we all have the same thing, if we are all on one accord and one mindset, um, receiving the same thing, then we should look the same way. But I want to show you the deception. The deception is that people are saying God and because people have a desire to be people have a more, people have a stronger desire to be successful than they have a desire to be like Christ. 
So Satan has used man's desire to say, we're going to say God, but my desire is not really to be like, to walk like Christ, to, to become like Christ. It is to use God to become like what I want, when I want, how I want. And this is the truth. And I'm sitting here and I'm watching this before thousands of people and they're saying this and I'm thinking, is there nobody in that audience? Is there nobody really have watched the movies or watched the TV shows this person is producing and asked themselves, how could he be saying God is the one that gave him the strength, God gave him the wisdom to build this, and yet what he built brings no glory to God? Do you know the Tower of Babel, what they were building, brought no glory to God? But God said there would be nothing impossible for man to do. So don't be deceived because men began to accomplish something, even a great feat. And they want to use God's name, but they're only using God's name. But the Bible says they really want to put their name on it. So they really wanted glory for themselves. But they're just saying, God, we're going to build this to God. But we really want glory for ourselves. And you're going to be able to tell the difference by what they build. Because what you build shouldn't deviate from the heart in which you are connected to. Oh, my God. What you be, and God scattered them and divided them. So, what are we building today that God had to scatter us? Because that's what COVID 19 did. What did we build today that God had to blow it all up? Church, what are we building? Was every man building after his own heart? I'm talking about me too, but I'm not talking what we build, what we did, what we what every church building after their own vision, and yet in building after our own vision. We could not, that people are now saying, well, and I know this is true because I do street ministry. And I remember doing street ministry one time, and this person was up, they, this person said this to me. So if I get saved, do, what should I become? Should I become a Baptist? Should I become a Pentecostal? What shall I become? And I'm looking at this person like, hmm. And I had to show him in the word, you shall become a son. That's what the word of God says. Because in family, there is no division in the spirit. Because the Bible says, unless you have my spirit, you're not a man. So it is the spirit that brings us to family because the spirit cries out, Abba. Amen. So, well, I just, you can, so we, now we kind of said it a little bit. You think? I'm just like, yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God is shaking us up because the Bible says, what I love about God is, he said he chased those in whom he loved. So what is happening to the church? Not people, all of us. Yeah. God is chasing his church because evidently we were building something that he said, I got to scatter. Because evidently it was not looking like what God wanted. It's like a wake up. Like a wake, like wake up. up. Yeah. From doing maybe like routine. You know sometimes you get caught up in like routine and stuff like that. You see things one like you know you kind of like just like play hey, routine routine guys like okay i'm not doing that i'm not doing that hello and, and sometimes we move over, not only routine we start inserting things into what god is doing. we can insert our color mm -hmm. we can we can insert our gender we can start inserting our education and the things that you and i begin to insert they don't, they begin to bring division. That's why Paul said, I preach not myself, but Christ Jesus and myself a servant. I have to preach the head so the body can be in alignment and fitly joined together, increasing itself in love. Amen. What do you think? You got something? Yeah, I was going to say, because even looking at that, I think it's good to go back to the why, though. And I think even looking at it, it was something that at one point you guys were talking about. Even with receiving, um, you know, like the, the the different visions and things, and it was just like, but man, like God said that in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And I know, like, even looking at God as being love, there's this thing of, and I, what I wrote down is they rejected love because they have embraced and accepted self hate. Like they, there, there's a place where you're still searching for an identity, you're still looking for a love, you're still looking to prove your worth. And so because of that, you're, you, you are going to gravitate towards those things that make you feel like you're somebody because you're not, you're not in alignment with the truth of where love comes from, where identity comes from. And so you, you know, it's like you, you see it and it's like, okay, but it's, 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 it's just like, it's really like, these are the things that come from the root of not 
really receiving the love of God. That's what Christ was sent for. Like because of love, he sent, you know, he sent his son for life. But when you reject him, you're rejecting all that comes with it. You're rejecting the truth, the love and all of these things. So when you see the division, it's really like a division. Like, I mean, there is a division in, in doctrine, but it's like the root is there are those that receive the love of God. And then there are those that, you know, they reject the love of God. And because they rejected it, it's almost like, I, I, I'm prideful to think that I can get it another way. Like I'm prideful to think, or I don't feel that you see this too. I don't believe I'm really deserving of it. And it's like, it goes back to like, okay, but even in these big churches that we see people that are sick, people that, and that's what it is. The truth is, is when, when we're, when we're disconnected, we're sick, we're broken, we're, you know, and it goes back to even what, what, what we, um, heard free people, free people, broken people, broke, great people, people that if you don't know who you are and your identity is coming from the things that you feel that you accomplished because you're in a world standard, that's what you're going to promote. So it, it, but the basis of that is anybody that's turned away from that is because they found a greater treasure. They found, you know, they found life, they found love, they found identity, and they realize that this is greater than anything else that the world has to offer me. So I just was like, man, like there's a, there's still a place of brokenness mm -hmm. in people, but because of pride, they won't, they won't acknowledge it, Amen. you know? And yeah. also, and also I think he says in the last days, people gonna have itchy ears. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to hear sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. So to not really want to hear sound doctrine means you want to hear a doctrine that appeals to where you may want to find your identity. Mm -hmm. you no, know, if you want to find your identity as being successful, and there's nothing wrong with being successful, but when success, when you begin to perceive success is your identity mm -hmm. and, and, and that's your purpose, then you you have rejected Christ. You reject it because um no, it may be something that it may be your assignment, mm -hmm. and in that assignment there may be success, but success is in you having life mm -hmm. and having it more abundantly. That's within Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, because if success was by what you obtain, and the Bible says life does not consist in the abundance of things that you possess. If success was in the things that you obtained, then your success can be taken from you, and then all of a sudden you're no longer successful. You're nobody. If your identity is in something that can be taken from you, then you no longer find yourself feeling like nobody. If your identity is in a man, now it's all about if I get a man, if I get a woman, or if I just get this job, if I get this business. So your identity has now be, been placed in something that is temporal, mm -hmm. when your identity should have been placed in Christ, who was offering something that which is eternal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which exceeds the things that are temporal. Not that you cannot. He cannot add the things for the temple, but you understand the things that he's adding never have more value than what you receive, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. Amen. And I thought, but I but something that you said I thought was um interesting to you, Jasmine. You said, where do we live? Where, where do we find love? Well, we're gonna go, we're gonna get into this. Love is found. What do you think we find love at? If I'm if I'm hearing the gospel, where do where is the love being displayed in the on um, the gospel? And that's the one place where we can all be unified. John 3.16? No. Okay, John 3.16 is what he did. But where is the love being found in the gospel? Where is, where is what every human being other than Christ needs to understand this, to understand the love of God in the gospel? Me that wants to say sacrifice? I'm like, y'all feel like I'm wrong. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to share with you. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. I want to learn this. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna find it. Start and reading verse ten. I'm gonna show you. Remember that question. We're gonna, I'm gonna answer it in verse as we start with reading verse ten. Okay. Um, First Corinthians chapter one verse ten. Mm -hmm. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now, look what he said. We're going to get to that point about what we find love. But he's in the Bible, Paul is saying to the Corinthians that you should all, why are you speaking something different as if God gave you something different? No, and I know, I know. See, we, we, I'm going to tell you something. We want to impress people with our ability to expound on the word, but the simplicity of salvation is in Christ Jesus. But yet we have found men who have made it seem as if it is so difficult to obtain that you need them to be able to get it instead of them, instead of them understanding all they, all they need is you to preach Christ. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't need you to get it. I need you to preach the one who gives it. Yeah. Amen? So he's telling us that we should all be of the same mind. The Bible says when they were up on the upper room, they were all on one accord and one mindset. So one thing that, okay, we're going we to, God is going to give us some understanding. One thing to keep unity, we must be all of the same mind, on the same mind. So therefore, when people talk about, I got some new revelation. <laughs> It's funny how we think we know what you what you might have got. What the, 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 the revelation? I'm not saying somebody couldn't get some some insight on how to bring a word to bring the word that is there that in a way that people can understand the people that you've been sent to to see it clear. But see, that's why the Bible say you, you might ever wonder why the Bible say it's new, but it's not new. He would say that often in the Bible. He would speak as if it is new. But it is not. I remember my first. I was like, God, what is that? He's saying the, the new commandment I give unto you. Then he'd be like, but it's, but it's not new. You know what I'm saying? And, and what he's saying is the revelation is new unto you because you're you're getting the insight that's being opened to you. But it's been established since the beginning of time. In other words, I'm the God that don't change. In other words, I want when you under other words. Understanding my love is not something that just came into existence when you got this revelation. I am the God that loved like this from the foundation of the world. So it is new unto you, but it is not new because it is who I am. What, what, is, what is the greatest commandment? To love God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. To love thy neighbor as thyself. This is a new commandment I give unto you, but it is not new. Why? Because this is who I am. If that's God has been loved since, since always. So it's new unto you because it's because you got the insight. But that, let me tell you something too. And just because it's new unto you and it's, you got the revelation of love that's new unto you in Miami, or here, don't mean that somebody in, 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 in Minnesota or Wisconsin hadn't had that revelation already. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. See, we got to understand that God is unlocking himself to those who are diligently seeking him. But in, in him unlocking himself, you're getting... You're, it's like you're opening up to see, and it's like a parent. You know, you know this, this, this is so good. You know, like a father with the children, right? Like a daughter. And you ever hey, when you a father, when your father or you a, a child or a teacher, a teacher gets great joy when they see one of their students be like, "Oh my God, I got this, got this!" And they are so excited about getting this new revelation. And the teacher sits back and does not spoil it, but rejoices because what they perceive is new. The teacher already knew it. The teacher already got it. But the teacher is rejoicing because now they have it and now they can extend it to somebody else. See, so when people try to act like, oh man, run over here because it's this new, great new life. Oh, I ain't no love. Hold up. No. No. I've seen it. And it's funny when and that you've been in ministry for, for uh, any period of time. I love, let me tell you what I love. I remember when God would have, God would tell me, break the church up in groups. And when I would break the church up in groups and we would give them different topics, we would give them different words in the church. Like we may break the group of church up in nine or ten groups, uh, 15, 20. And we would break the church up, right? And we may give them words like the church would get the word, one, one group might get the word uh, forgiveness. One group might get the word um, kindness. Yeah. One group might get the word um, um, revelation. And the groups would have to tell us the education. The app, they would have to get the education. They would have the application. And they would have to do the uh, education, application, graduation. But I was amazed. But when the groups would bring up, now let's say I've been preaching on forgiveness. Yeah. But then I noticed this group would come. But they would preach on a forgiveness in a way that people were like, "Ooh, that was so good!" It God gave them. It was still, it was yeah. still forgiveness. So, but, but but the way God opened it up to them, it just caused you to see it in a different way. But it was still forgiveness, and yet then and see this. Is what remember I told you? Where division come? See now, this is what division, and we will find out in the word how this is a heart issue. Um, the vision comes where when they got that new revelation, then somebody was like, oh, oh man, that ain't nothing. You know what? I got a better revelation. Now you got strife because, and, they, and then you're going to start talking negative about their revelation when it's actually of the same. It's forgiveness. It's just the same. 
And I, I'm, I'm tired. People, when they when they first come into ministry, I know I did it too. You first come in and you're getting revelation, thinking you know more than a pastor that's been into it for 18 years, thinking you know more than a pastor that's been into it for 15 years. You ain't you don't know no more. You just man, you may see it a little dip. You the pastor, the new pastor, your revelation might be for the what for the generation that you're seeing at that point. Let me give an example. Well, the first pastor, the pastor 18 years ago was preaching it from the point of he preached forgiveness for them. But you being able to rap or you being able to expound on it in a different type of manner, but it's still forgiveness. So why would you hate the one or try to despise the one in the older generation who preached it when it's the same thing? And Satan, but see, that's, but, but why do we do it? It's a condition of the heart. It's a condition, well, my business is going to be better than your business. No, we on the same. We all got the same business to build the kingdom, but we don't let the world get into. See, Coca Cola ain't not trying. Coca Cola not trying to promote um Pepsi, and we've allowed this wicked mentality to come into the church. But we gonna see God. God gonna deal with this right now. Keep on going, guys. Okay, verse eleven. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, uh -huh. by those of Chloe's household, mm -hmm. that there are contentions among you. There's some issues in the church. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or mm -hmm. I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Stop right there. Is what? Is Christ divided? Say it one more time. Is Christ divided? You are now claiming to be a man. Mm. Well, I'm of apostle. I'm of apostle Arbery. Well, I'm of apostle um Chris. No, I'm of apostle Boo Boo. I'm of apostle Moo Moo Nunu. Or oh, I'm pastor. You. He says, "What apostle Arbery wasn't crucified for you? I'm an under shepherd." Christ is, see, the only way I'm going I'm, I'm to take that glory is Christ have to be dead. Mm -hmm. For if I try to take that glory, then the head, the only way I can be the head, the head has to be dead. Head, that's why the Bible said the head of man is Christ. He is the help, upper shepherd. And the under shepherd does not lead you to him. He leads you to the head. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You don't walk out the church boasting about your pastor. You walk out the church boasting about Jesus Christ, the redeemer of your soul. But I have seen, listen to what I'm telling you. I have seen it. I saw it even in my own heart and God had to break that thing. I have seen this spirit of wickedness resonate in the church and the sheep now gather according to who the man is or gather according to the name of their church and they have brought the vision and God has saw this thing and it is not pleasing in his eyes. And now men and women of God speak. These are shepherds. They bring report against one another to what? Increase their own fold as if their fold is the place where Christ dwells. When they are merely a member of a body bigger than themselves. This is truth for myself and all men and women of God. Stop building your vision and get back to building God's kingdom. I have something to say. Okay, so even pin right there. Um, I actually witnessed it recently in this like this week or whatever, and that's how we actually start talking right. about this um message and it's honestly it is sad it is it's sad because we're all family you know what i'm saying and it's just like it's good to know when i have experienced two things it's and you you see two different um reactions after it i experienced one where you you just randomly randomly meet a person of faith a person of christ and it's literally like, uh, oh, you saved, I'm saved too. Da da da. We talking, and she's like, oh man, I wasn't expecting that. I didn't expect you to like, I misjudged you. I'm sorry, and stuff like that. We're literally talking. I'm talking about elaborating on the word of God, talking, enjoying each other's company, and then when we left. It was, it was just bye. All right, keep going, keep going. Like encouraging each other, you can do it. You know, like I'm good. It's like literally like it was. When I say we left this woman. 
Mind you, I saw her, and it was the, one of the most. She didn't look nothing like me. She was white. She was older. She was and whatever. And to, we were total opposites people. And it just when we left, it was just like man. It was so. It was like two soldiers coming together. Like hey, you, you doing good? Okay, I'm good. So keep going, keep going. And then we're our separate ways. Like you go ahead, you go here, you go there, I go there. And it was awesome. There was no pushing, no this or pushing that. It was more like man, there's soldiers. Of Christ here, yeah, like you know, we both we were literally treating each other like sisters. Like, and it was literally like she had a situation, just like I'm gonna continue going where, like, you know, thank you for this encouragement. It gave me more strength to keep doing what I'm doing here. Like, same thing for me, right? That thing was awesome. I was just like on cloud nine on that because it was just like beautiful. And I also experienced it recently about the whole okay, they pushing their church or their pastor or whatever. And not even Christ Jesus. And then say it was when I say it was just some man, I ain't going for it. It was just like it wasn't not even getting to know me. She I could not well I wasn't saved. She looked like this lady we met, we met um at Ross or something. She comes up to us and stuff like that. Whatever. She's like, um, can I talk to you ladies about do you guys know what's going on in these end times and stuff like that? And she talks about the still of God and you know, stuff like that. It's like, okay, okay, cool. And then she's like, um, yeah, my church have oh, we're we're international, we speak every language. Um, yes, we're bilingual. And not only that, but we have different, you know, we just different regions or whatever. Please do you know join our Zooms, join our Zoom our Bible study. Amber goes and say, Hey, you know, we already have a Bible study on that day, but thanks. And then we're just like, no, no, look, 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 like, you know, she just kept talking about the church. So I just said, uh, I feel like a question that should have, like, you know, like, it was just like a really, like, hello. It was just like, what were you, because she was talking about the Bible study she was having, but she wasn't talking nothing about the Bible study. It was only about how many people were watching the Bible study and how they're, they can speak different languages. I just asked a simple question. I said, what was your message? Like, what were you even speaking about? And then she was just like, oh, that's a good question. That was a good question. I can just show you. That should have been the first thing. The first thing you come to is Jesus Christ. Not how many people are on your thing. Mind you, if I was not saved or if it was just a person who's in the world, you come to me about views and um how many people are on your thing, but nothing about the person who could save my soul in my sin. That's come on, like that's kind of messed up. And then and then going on with the conversation, she talks about like, you know, like she was talking, like she was breaking <laughs> yo, once she says that we're in bondage to sin. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't come to Jesus just to be still stuck in sin. That's, I don't think that's what he died for, is to still be in bondage to sin. So, literally, when it says, like, study your word to show yourself a proof so you can become legit, because there's going to be people who are going to come to you and try to talk to you about everything but Jesus Christ, and then say what he, the opposite of what he came for, to be free of sin. Now, and me even explain that to her, she did not want to hear it. She was like, okay, I don't want to argue. It's not an argument, it's not a debate. This is, mind you, this is the Bible, that's division. And I'm thinking that, you know, you're coming from church and all about this Jesus. You know, I'm thinking of, we are talking about the seal of God and how he's coming back and you don't got the seal, then, you know, you'd be left behind. But, man, what happened? Like, we're supposed to be family, we're supposed to be a kingdom. And you can't even elaborate, you can't even talk about the fact that you still think you're in bondage to sin. That's the reason why Jesus Christ died for you for. That, and then all uh, you can push down my throat is, about how many views on your church, it's kind of like when I say reaction was totally different from the first lady, like the first lady I mentioned, where it was like, oh man, soldier to soldier, like keep going, keep going. But this was more like, yeah, you have been. She goes on talking about, you know, you might have a false preacher and a false pastor and a false prophet and stuff like Like she was saying, you know, like, you know, you might be the false because you're not in our church. Literally, she says that, like, because in our church, we, you know, we have people come in our church and they get the answer they want. And what they're looking for, and I'm just like, man, it just kind of, it was just crazy. It was, and, and it's sad because you automatically assume that somebody else is not being fed because they don't go where you go, Child. or you automatically assume that somebody's not saved because they are not a part of the arm. Um, when the truth be told is, you know, you're sitting there, get to know who they are. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. Get to know who they are. Get to, and you may realize that um, the spirit recognizes the spirit and you. 
begin to leap and enjoy the relationship that you are because you both are family. But I want to say this, Crystal, thank you for trenching that with a strength. I, I want to say, and, it, and it's sad because I, I know even as a man of God, people assume that when you talk to, oh, you don't know what I know. You don't, you don't, you don't have revelation on God. Man, just learn to just know, know this, that the Bible says that him who eat meat, let him not despise him who eat herbs, for God is well able to uphold his servant. In other words, don't start judging another a, a servant of God because you may perceive that he's not where you think you might be because the Bible says that God is well able to uphold that servant. God is well able to sustain that servant that you may feel may not be at the same caliber that you are. So just rejoice that what? What can we find in common? Just what, what you can find in common to rejoice is the love of God. In the love of God, I'm going, you may have to go a little early, I'm, I'm going to have to go, but the love of God is found at the cross. And I, that's what I want to share. The love of God is found at the cross. That's why Paul said, Paul talked about preaching the crucifixion. It's found. Every human being can find the love of God at the cross. Because every human being besides Christ was a sinner. So there is no human being, no matter if you are male or female, white, black, no matter if you have a PhD or a GED, no matter what you may perceive who you think you are, you had to find it. At, you had your rest, your, as Jasmine said earlier, is understanding the love of God and heart of God. There is no one that there, every human being besides Christ had to find love at the cross. Because at the cross is where the price was paid. Christ crucified is at the so there is no so all the things that you think you excel in. And all the knowledge you think, I don't care how many degrees you have, I don't care how many, how, how, many, how, how many different ways you think you can expound on Hebrew or Greek, you found your salvation at the foot of the cross. The same way that that woman with that third great education and you have a master's degree, she found her salvation at the foot of the cross. It was nothing you did or what she did. It was all what Jesus did on the cross. So we all remain humble and willing to, to lift each other up, to pull one another, to bless one another, to, to walk as the body because the whole body needed the cross. And that's where we, when we go into get turn, when we turn our eyes back to Jesus, we have to learn as men of God, including myself, I'm talking first to myself, to preach, pre to, do not stop preaching the cross. Christ crucified. Because when you stop preaching the cross and Christ from the foundation of someone's salvation, they start thinking it's about them and what they have achieved instead of it being about God and what He has done. Amen. 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 So let's let's read let's let, let's read a little bit more. Okay, verse 13. Is Christ divided? Mm. Was Paul crucified for you? Let me say no. No. Okay, go ahead. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Mm. I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gainus. G G I don't know how to pronounce it. Gain just Gainus. Okay, Gainus. Yes. Lest any um, one should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the house of, the, of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize. He did not what? He did not send me to baptize. You said that's not my number one priority. No. Go ahead. But to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. So he says, I don't want, in other words, I don't want you preaching the word in a way that is it man's wisdom, in your own wisdom. For don't take it, don't take it from the simplicity of when I say simplicity, I'm not saying the act that what the act that it took was of great love and great courage, but it all came from the cross. What Jesus came from that cross brought you and you and yours, mine, the all, brought your freedom. You are free. And remember, we talked about yesterday, only uh, you said it earlier, hurt people, hurt people. Free people, free people. But free people need to understand where their freedom came from so they'll know how to free people. Mm -hmm. See, when you don't understand where your freedom came from and you're sitting there trying to intellectually um, battle with someone or intellectually trying to entice or um, 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 uh, get someone to see you instead of them seeing the cross. Because if that's 
That's the key. The cross is the key to the heart. Oh my God. See, the, you know how a key unlocks, un unlocks the chains? Well, the cross is the key that unlocks the chains of our heart. From what? That's why it says one body in Christ in love. But the logo is the heart. Why? Because the heart, our heart needed to be unlocked from what? Bitterness. Our heart needed to be unlocked from the things that sin produced. Come on now. God had to unlock our heart from the things that sin produced and begin to pour himself in our heart. Which is all who God is, where there is love and patience and gentleness. So all of us who receive the spirit of God. Though we may minister according to our own ability, what you have received is the same. In other words, Greg had received the grace of God. He had received, uh, Trin had received. It doesn't matter if you 17 or you 35. It's at the cross. So Paul said, I love the way Paul said, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none of that. See, the cross is the place that unifies us. The cross is the place that makes us one body. See, if everybody had to go to the cross, can't nobody walk around talking about prideful. Can nobody walk can nobody talk, can nobody walk around talking about my church better than your church? Because nobody in your church got saved by you. They got saved by the cross. Nobody in my church, no one at one at the church that I'm pastoring at, no one got saved by Apostle Albert. They got saved by what Jesus did at the cross. No, no, let me, oh, oh my God. The Bible says one water, one plant, apostle, apostle, uh, my brother who I love greatly, apostle Chris water, apostle Arbery may plant, but it is God alone who saves. For the Bible says he gives the increase. He causes a person to grow. Then what does the men and women of God do? We have the ability to believe that God can cause when we are planting and when we are watering. What, what does the man of God do? They stand in faith. In faith in who? That God is going to bring increase. They believe that God is going to be made. Like God is going, that Christ is going to be formed in you. They believe that Christ is going to be. Because see, you got to believe. So, because you know what? You're not going to want to plant. You're not going to want to water if you don't. You got to believe that if you go to a real man and woman of God, that those who don't believe are not going to. They, they agenda may be different. If they're doing it for money or they're doing it for notoriety and fame, they don't really care about your increase. They just care about your performance. They care about your ability to perform. But those who are in Christ, they have the faith. Even though you are struggling, let's say you're struggling with perversion, you are struggling with lying, you are struggling. They have the faith to believe that the water that the seed, that the word that they are planting, and the watering of that word, that God is going to bring increase in your life. So they what? They can see the greatness in you, even when you're looking crazy. They can see why? Because it's not about you. They have faith in the word that they are preaching that God will watch over His word, not their word. That God will watch over His word to produce in you. So somebody need to rejoice under my voice today. Somebody that's looking, you need to rejoice. Why? Because I have faith, and and, and, and the men of God who preach it have faith. Even when you're like, God, I don't know, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I believe that the word that's been planted in you, and the water that's been that's been sprinkled over you, that God has the ability. My faith is in God. That God has the ability. The one who sent His Son, who loved us enough that gave His only begotten Son, the Son who rose on the air day, who sits on the right hand side of the Father, the Son who said, "In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not say it. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I am, so shall you be." I believe that that God. Come on. I I know you're struggling. I know it's, I know that the flesh is struggling against the spirit at times. I know that you're in the fight of your life, but I believe in God. I trust that God has the ability to do what? To produce what his word has been planted into you to do. What is that? To transform your life into the image and the likeness of God. I believe it. And every preacher is... Every preacher that has the Holy Spirit, that is what he is preaching. He is not He is not your Savior. Jesus Christ is your Savior. It is the word that he is releasing, that he has faith in that word. It is, isn't it funny that we have transformed it? Now, I'm going to take everything to what false gospel has done. It has transformed the faith in the word to believe that you can get anything you want. 
And it's funny that the most Christians today, because they believe in this new gospel, their belief is in always something that's benefiting their flesh. But I believe, oh my God, and I believe the sons and daughters of God believe in that word, that that word has the ability to produce in you the image and the likeness of God that you may have victory no matter what area you may have. You may have victory if you live in a mansion. You may have victory if you live on the streets. That you may have victory if you're in a hospital. That you may have victory if you're healthy. In other words, the word of God and what is producing in you eternal life in the image of God himself gives you victory over every situation because why your reward is in him your faith is in him and we believe I believe and I pray that you believe that the word of God that you're sitting up under and those who are preaching Christ Jesus that word is being released not the, that's why you can't add nothing to that word you can't be behind that pulpit adding your color to that word why because blackness did not blackness was not crucified for you Whiteness was not crucified for you. You can't be behind that pope and preaching about male or female. Why? Because a woman was not crucified. A, 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 a male gender was not crucified for you. A woman, it was Jesus Christ. And I know he came in the he came in uh in the um the image of a man, the, uh, in the flesh of a man, but it was what was it was what was in that package. Because there are many men, but it was what was in that package, it was God in that package who was crucified, he crucified his flesh for you. So believing that the word of God is producing in you and every man of God who has this hope in him, trusting and saying, man, I know God, you're going to save these people. I know God that you're going to deliver these people and deliverance may not look the same. That's why God had to tell me one time, you got to be willing to lose it. Why? Because sometimes deliverance means I might, you might, somebody may be in my church and I had to learn this. Someone could be in my church and they're getting water and God says, okay, I had, I, I mean, I had you plant, but I'm going to move them over here. To water them. And another man of God may water them. In other words, you're not, as a pastor, I'm not the only one that God can use for that person to grow. My God, you're not the only When a man of God try to make you think he's the only one that God can use for you to grow, if you go to his church, no other church can be able to impart it to you. Nobody else, that's a lie. Because the bottom line is, come on, some of us, you watch, you, you watch on television. So how is that possible? You know, you were telling me you never watched a sermon on television, or you never watched a sermon that blessed your soul? Yes. One war. One plan. And the Bible says they are nothing. But it is he. All glory go to God who gives the increase. What's the increase mean? Causes that to grow. When you see somebody growing and increase, that's glory go to God and God alone. So every man and woman of God, we are on one accord. We know this. We are on one accord. That's what keeps us in oneness. We celebrate. What do men of God celebrate? Men of God in Iraq. Men of God in um New Jersey. Men of God in Miami. Why is the body of God so rejoicing? Why is it so unified? Those who are disciples. Because they what? They are rejoicing because they know that God is giving increase as they release the word and water. Amen. Amen. So Paul is dealing with this issue. And Paul, put, and watch this, Paul is dealing with this issue. And he said, but you know why was Paul was dealing with this issue? Put a, put a pen in it right there for a minute. And go over. Why was what was the issue Paul was doing? Go to um chapter three, read verse uh one. Go down. Okay. Um, chapter three, first Corinthians chapter three, verse verse one. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. He said, because there's too many babies. Mm -hmm. He said, Paul said. Paul is now addressing the issue in chapter one and chapter three and saying why he couldn't speak to them and, and, and get deeper into because he said there was too many. He, he, he said, he says, and I, brother, could not speak to, unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes on Christ. Come on, watch me myself. Go ahead. I'll continue. Mm -hmm. I fed you with milk mm -hmm. and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, mm -hmm. and even now you are still not able, for if you are for you are still carnal, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behave like mere men? Hold up. This is the word. Paul says, he talking to all us, me included. He said, uh, he said, where well, there is envy and strife and division, you are carnal and walk as men. And yet we think we, we, we think we got it going on. And God says, all God says, he said, I had to come. I truly believe that God had to shake up 2020 and to reveal his vision that we were outside of his vision. How do we know we was outside of his vision? Because there was envy, strife, and division. But God is not, but I believe God has called us back to Jesus Christ, called us back to his vision, and, and, and getting rid of the envy and strife. How do you get rid of the envy and strife and jealousy? By remembering the cross and remembering that the what, what the what did the cross why did, what, was, what is the cross about? The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. When John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ, he said, The Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. That what? On the cross is the place where our hearts get changed because of what Jesus did and what he's doing. But he says, now, nah, and y'all, come on now, can we be honest? Come on, even with ourselves, you're going to tell me you haven't seen envy in the church? You're going to tell me you haven't seen strife in the church? You're going to tell me you haven't seen division in the church? And, 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 the, and the world says, if you have seen these things, and even at church, we're talking about, oh, my, we are so advanced. How are you going to be so advanced when there's such envy and strife? He said, we are carnal, we are babies. We can't even win the loss because we're too busy fighting each other. But I'm so glad that God is chasing me. And I'm so glad that God is chasing you. And I'm so glad that God is chasing his sons and daughters and men of God to bring us back to the one Jesus Christ who, who, who reminds us of the gift that was given us on that cross. And the humility and the love that was given to us in him. That we can rejoice again about, man, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad God saved me. You glad he saved you? I'm so glad that God delivered me. You, what about you? What about you, Jack? You glad God saved you? Yes. I remember. How about you, Greg? I'm so glad, man, that he was. Man, is there anybody? You glad? Come on. I'm glad that he went to the cross. Come on. Let us not despise the cross. For on that cross, man, that by that the, uh, the Lamb of God was on that cross, and because he was on that cross, guess what? He freed you. Anybody free in the house? Yeah. Free in the house. And you know what Satan like to do? He just an accuser. Why is Satan accused? He want to always try to accuse you to get you to think that you're not free. But you need to look that devil in his face and say, hold up. I'm free indeed. Um, what I go? In Christ, I'm free indeed. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Chains are holding me. <laughs> it's who I choose to be. I choose to be free. Why? Because the word of God says I'm free. Why? Because on that cross, unlock the sin, the bondage of sin off me. And there is no one on this earth that escaped the fact that you need Jesus Christ as the key to unlock the bondage of sin off you. And I, 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 I'm preaching the gospel, but I didn't. But it's the gospel that I'm preaching, the cross that I'm preaching that unlocks the sin off you. The same gospel I'm preaching is the gospel that set me free. That's why they call it good news. Did you get the good news, uh, Greg? Uh, Jatia, you got the good news? The good news. Because the good news, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have a car. It's nice to get married. But what good is getting married and have a car if you're not free? You still have envy, jealousy. You know, I, I'm telling you, it's one thing I noticed this year, not only in people, can I talk about myself, be transparent. And I saw some things in my own heart toward people because of how things were going and how things were acting. I was like, my heart was like, hmm, I can really hate this person. And I, I, I was like, I didn't believe that can be in my heart. And God says, yeah. I said, he said, but I'm not showing you this um, to, because I'm condemning you. I'm showing you this to let you know how much you need me. I'm showing you this that you got to remember who I am. Because, see, what happens is when you start getting revelation and knowledge, you start, and you start getting a little bit, you can forget that it's the gift that was at the cross that sets you free. You start thinking you're free because you got some word. You start thinking you're free because what you think you're doing. For God. Do, you, do you know how many people think they're free because what they think they do in a church? They think they're free because they pay.
pay your tithes. Paying your tithes don't make you free. The cross made you free. Preaching the gospel didn't make me free. Receiving the gospel, becoming the gospel made me free. Keep reading, read a little bit more. Okay. Verse four. When one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of, of, of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe, as the Lord gave to each one? Mm. Continue. Ministers until we believe. I'm just a minister in which you believe. Your pastor is merely a minister in which you believe. Believe what, what he was preaching, because you have to believe. Because if you don't believe, how are you going to get it for your own family? You have to believe the same God that the word that was preached over you that's unlocking it and God is adding growth in you. You have to believe that for your family. You have to be, watch this. You have to believe it for your enemy. I have to believe that God can save me and my enemy. Why? If I was because the Bible says I was an enemy to God. And if the word can save me and transform me, that's I have to believe that that word can save my enemy and transform them. We don't got to the place we're selective about who we want to be saved. Because we're not really looking at them being saved. We're looking at how they bend in our church. Our vision. Instead of God's vision, the kingdom. Go ahead. Amen. I planted, Apollos watered, but mm. God gave the increase. Say it again. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Who gives the increase? God. Who gives the increase? God. So give all glory to who? God. Mm. I just believe that God gonna do it. I give all the. I don't preach the word to Jasmine. You know what? Guess what? What, what the church you came from? What? Who, um, the Faith Center. The Faith Center. What's what's the pastor name? Um, uh, Bishop Henry Fernandez. Henry Bishop Bishop Henry Fernandez watered the word, planted the word seed in you first. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When well, he was one of the Bishop Henry Fernandez. He gave us one, then God said, okay, I'm going to send Jasmine over here. And I watered. And guess what? But well, Bishop uh, Fernandez. Henry Fernandez or Apostle Arthur can't take no credit for that. She grew because God gave her an increase. So watch this. Bishop Fernandez believed that God was going to give Jasmine. Uh, Apostle Arbery believed that God was going to give. And guess what? As we see her grow, we give, we, give, we give God the glory. We worship God. We magnify God because we believe it. Amen. 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 So she should honor the men of God, but give all glory to God who has given her an increase. Okay. So then neither he who plants mm -hmm. is anything. What? He who plants is anything. Neither he who plants is anything. Mm. So that means we can't get puffed up. No. So we can't be going around trying to say, you know what? It was me that got you saved. But no. Because the word said, neither he who plant or what? Go ahead. Neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So who get all glory? God. God. Isn't it funny that we are saved that God will share his glory with no man? And yet, we, be, we have to be very careful that we don't find ourselves trying to take God's glory. Hmm. God is the one that causes the growth. God is the one that builds the, he's building his body. Amen. We are just master builders because why? He allowed his word to flow through us and to teach his word. And then we watch it. Paul said, if I don't believe the word, I don't, he said, let me not be a castaway. But the very word I preach to you, I better yield to it and let it begin to, let it birth fruit and grow and, and increase me. His word is life. Amen. Amen. See, if people had an appetite, we have to be very careful because I'm going to tell you something. I'm, can I tell you, like, I have to be very careful. You know, Paul said, we don't, I believe in the scripture. Let me correct myself. I believe in the scripture. He said, we don't have many fathers. Mm -hmm. And I believe, according to scripture, that God does give. Uh, Paul looked at some of the people under him as God gave them to so into them as a father. Amen. Or to sow it into as a door. But we better be very careful to understand, even when we when we when, when we sow into them and we love them and we nourish them, we do more than just give the word, we labor with them. 
that they still belong to God. And God is still the one who is responsible for the increase. So if you're a man of God like me, you and God is teaching you this, and he's, and he's chasing us and correcting us, man, repent like I had to repent. You got to repent. Ask God to forgive you. Let him open your eyes to back to what he's building. Amen. 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 Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one they will, what? They are one. He who plants and he who waters are one. So they took so they, they work together on, on the same team. Yes. So they should never be talking evil against one another. No. They should never because if you're one, you can't slander one another. Right. Mm, okay. <laughs> and then we wonder why God shook everything. Right. Go ahead. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Mm -hmm. Though they're one, they go, each one gonna get a reward. Yes, according yeah. to his own labor. I, I want a reward. I, 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 I just I want a reward. Amen. Amen. You want a reward? Yes. I want a reward. Yeah. Go ahead. Amen. You want a reward? I want a reward. Yeah, I do. I want a reward. It's just mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Can I add to that? Yeah, go ahead. So even just to read the 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 part where it says in um each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. I just think that's you know the fact that it said labor stood out to me because it takes me to the part where it says like about the sheep that are you know he said that um Jesus had compassion on the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he said you know, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And it goes back to even to have this heart. It is a heart for the lost. Like, it's not about whether or not I I did the laboring or not, but it's the fact that my heart wants to see these people saved. I want to see them, you know, knowing him, learning him. And so I, I just think that, and, and honestly, that that is the reward. It's, it, it is a reward when you see someone. Ooh, Actually, my God. Christ. So it's just, I, it's that, just that is, yeah. that is. Because yeah. that, that, even heaven rejoices. Yeah. yeah. The Bible said when one soul is said, that's a reward. Mm -hmm. To see God give increase. And I remember when Greg was a heathen. I'm never telling myself. Amen. I remember when I was a heathen. Man, come on, oh Lord. When you see God get increase, and you see these kids, I mean, they on fire for God. And, they, and it's, and it's not an act. It's not going to love God and on fire for God. And you see, you see, see him, you see him, you know, going and you, I've seen, that's to me, that, that's why I took the a pastor appreciation. You can keep your appreciation. Man, my appreciation is to see, I, I honestly, I, if you ask people that set up on my, I'm telling you, you can have, I don't need no appreciation. My appreciation is to see God get increased to your life. To see you actually move, come on! You on a battlefield and you out there ministering, and you and God is able to send you to jobs and situations, and people now your life is your life is you your life is being a light to other people. Man, what can be greater than that? And especially when you know somebody's story, you know she used to be a stripper. This person used to, and you see God, and yet I have seen people ridicule people, slander people because they think well who are you to think that you should be out there witnessing for God who are you to, no but, but don't but I tell you, but be encouraged because they said that to the woman who was at the well that there were some people who said that they, they they looked at her and was like man I'm not going to see him because of you they didn't want to receive the fact that she had a testimony that she encountered Christ they just ignore her so don't worry about people ignore as long as they get to Christ as long as they want to don't worry about it. Long, they, they ain't gonna oh, talk to you. Oh, I'm not thinking about you. They may not. They may try to disqualify you, but as long as you get the Christ and God, you know, what I found out some people they get it quick and God move. Everybody's not at the same pace at the same time because some people the increase may come. But I found out one thing. They said many are called, but few are chosen. Right? The increase I found out comes a lot of times to those who have a heart to draw near. Amen. Those who have, because sometimes your increase, sometimes there are certain people that increase didn't come because they weren't really drawing near to God to become like God. They were drawing near to God to get what they want from God. And God knew their heart, just like he knew Judas' heart. He knew in their heart that they really had some other agenda, even though they were coming to church. Though they were coming to church, their whole agenda in church is to get married. Or when they were coming to church, their whole agenda was to build because they want a business. 
They want to use God in some way that's beneficial to the dreams and desires that they hope and so the purpose and the purpose that God has designed. It's just real. It's real. We see it, we see it in the scripture where it says some seed fell up on the wayside, some seed fell up on the stony grounds, some seed fell up on the thorns, and some seed fell up on the good ground. Meaning the soul was God. He sowed the word. But there were four different positions of hearts that was hearing the same word. All four of them heard the same word. And I remember my, I remember my wife preached a sermon. In the sermon she preached, when her, when her first sermon she ever preached, she said, you sit at the table to eat, but you get up to play. Everybody sat at the table and ate the same food. But, everybody got, but there were those who got up after they ate and began to play. But it is God. That's why man of God be able to say, no, no, that is not, mm, that's, that got to do with God. God gives the increase. And if God want to tarry longer with one than another, who are we to tell God? Hmm. He give mercy to who we give, God give mercy to who we want to give mercy to. That's the word too, amen? Amen. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, verse 9, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. Mm -hmm. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Come on. We're going to stop there. But I know it goes to the square. But there's no other foundation than Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That every man and woman of God. So we on, so watch this. We on one accord, right? Yes. We are disciplining the word of God. All men of God on one accord, right? Yes. We discipline. We all building on the same foundation, which is Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's the oneness. Right. Amen. We're all preaching the same gospel. We're preaching... Well, those who are in Christ are preaching. We are preaching the cross. Go back to the cross for a minute. Start at verse 17 and preach. Read that again. This is chapter 1? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, mm -hmm. lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Continue. Mm -hmm. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Come on. The cross is the what? The power of God mm. to those of us who are being saved. And to those who don't want us to receive it, it's foolishness to them. See, yes. the cross is foolishness. It's, in other words, when you when you try to bring the gospel down to the cross, to some people, that's just foolishness. I don't want to hear about that. Come on, give me something deeper. Give me the, you know, people you think I'm joking. People thinking... That it's almost like, um, the, the, no, it can't be the cross. Come on, give me the gifts, give me the talent, give me, give me it. Don't, don't give me the very act of love. See, the cross is the very act of love. It's love in action. No, I don't want that. Give me. I want to show people this. I, I want to show people the things that make me look good. You know, I, it almost as crazy as I think people think. And I know this must seem like I'm stretching, but it's make a point. People think that one of the most wickedest holidays of the year is Halloween. Halloween is not one of the most wicked holidays of the year. Actually, Valentine's Day is. Why? Because it comes under the umbrella of love. And so many people, Halloween, uh, Valentine's is one of the days of the year where people just deeply indulge in their lustful flesh, in their lustful flesh, under the masquerade of love. See, Halloween, everybody knows is wicked. Everybody know, and, 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 and you know, even the church, like, it's Halloween. But see, nobody expect Valentine's Day to be one of the days to say, but see, anytime you pervert something from what it really is, and you can have many people perceiving that the, what you perverted it to is what it really is, that's the greatest deception. The greatest deception is to believe that, do you know how many people laid on their back last night and got gifts and all for one day and talking about love and this and that? And right back tomorrow, they're going to go back to, to, in the sin, in the filth and uncleanness that they operate in? Today. Yeah, today. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Gonna end up, gonna provoke a move. Valentine's provoke a, a move of flesh. Like, oh my God, it provokes a move of flesh. Even to the Valentine's Day provoke a move of flesh, even to the place that some that some Christians get sucked into it by by the envy and jealousy of what, what people are getting and what they're receiving for one day. Oh Satan so so. Like I've realized a lot, like all day today, where people like Christians were posting like about ways to cope being single on Valentine's days and da 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 dee dee, and it's just like as if it's like a disease, like oh you're single on Valentine's Day, like as if God is not, as if God who is love is not love on this day. So now because God who is love is not love on this day. And flesh says that you got to have someone ministering to your flesh today, comforting your flesh today, giving you all kind of gifts. You know, you got people who cheating on people, lying on people, deceiving, and they gave them all kind of gifts. And you want to let one day of false love think that you think that you have love again. Come on, man, stop playing games. We see the subtlety of Satan because God's love is something the sacrifice on that cross is a freedom of operating in love every day. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. And then, and then here we go again in the church, pacifying another pagan holiday. To now we trying to make people feel. Let me make you feel comfortable with this day. Let me make. I want you to feel special this day. No, preach Christ. If you preach Christ crucified, they don't feel special every day. If you preach the gift that was given to them, where he says, "For for the, the preaching of the cross is to them their perish foolishness, but unto us which." Are saying it is power. If, if you preach the cross, it's power every day. Power what? Knowing that you are loved. Power of knowing that you have purpose. Power knowing that God is that you have been ordained. That you are that you are, your identity is in Him. It's power every day. And I'm out there sad when you got Christians walking, standing around talking about the day, man, I felt lonely today. I felt I had to do something. But what do you mean as though the power of God's love for you wouldn't have? Because, you, because why? Because you bought into the movies. You bought into all the camp and all that stuff. That, 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 that. Do, you, you, do you not see the marketing of it? Do you not see the marketing of it and all that? And then after, after all this, everything go back. Hours later, go back to the same old foolish it was before because it has no power to change. But the cross has, but the pot, but the cross and the love that comes from the cross has power to transform. It's power in it. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Yeah, that was it. That was mm -hmm. Okay. Um, verse 19. For it is written, mm -hmm. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and mm -hmm. bring it to nothing, the understanding of the prudent. Mm -hmm. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Mm -hmm. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to those who believe. So they believed through the message was preached. What was preached? The cross. And they believed. And, yes. and in that belief of the cross brought transformation, increase in God. Yes. Oh my God, what a love story. Okay. For Jews request a sign mm -hmm. and Greeks seek after wisdom. So we know for the Jews required a sign, right? Mm -hmm. They wanted the Jews wanted to request, they wanted a sign, they wanted to see something. We got don't we have Christians like that today? Mm -hmm. Always looking for a sign. Christians are always looking for a sign. I need a sign to be, I need a sign to be, but don't, don't don't feel strange. It's the same thing, but it's it was happening, it's nothing new. And the Greeks are uh, um, seek, seek out the wisdom. You got those who are always trying to go deeper into it, want greater wisdom, want, want trying to uh, get it. But what? Watch this. Keep reading. But we preach Christ crucified. Mm. Oh, yeah. We preach what? Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. To the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. Mm -hmm. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Keep reading. 
For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, mm -hmm. not many mighty, not many noble are called. Mm. It's funny that God, it's funny that God called one. He called people that, that, that's not wise and not noble. In other words, yes, he chose you and me. Amen. God he, he called the unwise. In other words, it was it's not your credentials that qualify God. It is not our credentials that qualify God to call us. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah, I'm for real. Yeah. Verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Mm -hmm. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put the, to shame the things which are mighty mm -hmm. and the base things of the world and the things which were despised. God has chosen and the things which were are not to bring to nothing the things that are mm -hmm. that no flesh should glory in Say it again. That no flesh should glory in his presence. And that's another going to keep all men of God and women of God where God wants us in unity and love and oneness. Ain't no flesh. Ain't no flesh. In other words, God didn't call you based on your credentials. God didn't call you based on your business sense. He didn't call you based on the things that you now have pride in and perceive people uh, that you now that you now have shifted the gospel to. He, uh, it's the cross. It was because without the cross and the crucifixion, we are all bound. Amen. Without the cross and the crucifixion, we are all lost. So that means none of us did anything to save. None of us did. There was nothing we had or anything we could offer God that saved us. It was all God and God alone Amen. in sending his son. And if we preach that, and all men and men and Men and God on one accord preaching the gospel. How could we be not in unity? How could we not be in oneness when we all needed the same thing to be saved? Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. So to close it out, um, verse thirty it says, "But to, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus." who became for us wisdom from God mm -hmm. and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. He who glory, let him glory in who? In the Lord. For Jesus became all those things for us. Amen. And that's why I cannot preach myself, but Christ Jesus and myself a servant of the one who delivered me and set me free. And every man and woman of God all around the world who call upon the name of the Lord is preaching that same gospel. And in that same gospel, every man and woman of God all around the world are believing by faith that God is increasing those that they are releasing this word of gospel, this, this, this good news to. And God is giving the increase and we are glorifying God. And we are thanking God that he chooses the weak things. We thank God that he chooses the foolish things. Because I know I was foolish and weak. Yeah? Yeah. But in him, he's my, in him, he's our strength. Father God, we thank you for this word today. We pray that every hearer of this word, Father God, will understand their true value and know that the word that has been released over their life, the good news of the gospel, Father God has the power to transform and the power to renew and to reconcile them back to the Father. We thank you that your word will not return void. That it is prospering, even right now, God, in the ears of the hearer. That they will know that, that, yes, God chose you. Oh, my God. Yes, God has chosen you. He has chosen the unqualified to qualify. He has chosen the weak to show his strength. He has chosen the foolish to show his wisdom. That we may all, all always remember as one body that it is Christ who the Father sent that we have life and have life in more abundantly in. It is his goodness in which we have salvation through. So we give him all the glory and no flesh, black, white, male or female, no flesh shall glory. For all that is good came from Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. We thank you, God, for, temp for forgiving us, God. Forgiving us for put putting, uh, allowing walls to be put up Forgive, forgive us for allowing ourselves to be inserted in your word. 
to divide. God, whatever we have established, God, to divide, let it be destroyed and ripped down. That all that has remained standing is Christ Jesus. For there is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. It is Christ in us all and who is all. Let us give you, let, let us give you glory because of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for your increase in each and every one of our lives and all the lives that we are praying for, God. Let salvation reign. Let salvation reign. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Any questions? Is there a question? No questions. Mm -hmm. I want to thank the women of God tonight. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Trinity. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. Am I still on that? Oh, deuces. <laughs> <laughs> I was crazy.